I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to take a look at table definitions and more specifically, how to uh, first query all the table definitions in your database, but also how to use DAO to cycle through your table defs and make changes to your tables. Uh, and this is especially handy when you've got a whole ton of tables and if you relink and you and you've got a whole bunch of tables with underscore ones on them and you need to delete them or or if you need to you know add and change tables and do do all kinds of things so without further ado let's get to it okay pretty fun uh, topic today you guys uh, we're going to take a look at how to look up tables in your access database in addition to how to cycle through them and make changes to certain ones depending on conditions which is really great for people that have a ton of tables. Now you can see I'm scrolling through this sort of uh, Frankenstein of a database that we've been working on for the past uh, few years. And note these two at the bottom here. One is a, an, a connection to an Azure SQL database. That's a link table. That's the one with the world on it. And the other one is an, ac an access linked table. And so those are part of our table collection. So I wanted to be able to include those today and the first way we're going to look up tables and find out what tables we have is to create a new query. We're just going to cancel that um, add box and we're going to go to the SQL view. And we're going to type this in manually. And I'm just going to type in select name and type uh, from uh, MySys objects. And that's like a table that has all kinds of different objects from Microsoft Access in it. And not all of them are tables. Um, so you can also use this to look up forms and things like that. So I would, I would suggest that you go and, and uh, you know, familiarize yourself with all the different things that are in there so that you can look up forms, you can look, look up all kinds of things. Well, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say where the type is, is one and the uh, left part of the name is not equal to MySys because those are the, the system tables and we don't really want to uh, mess around with those. And if I could type here, I'd get the end of this done. Okay, so there we go. So now I've got um, a list of our tables, and you can see that um, you know I've got all those tables that you saw before. Um, those are those are in this list, except for the two link tables. And I believe the uh, uh, type four is ODBC and type six is an access link table. So you could actually include those as part of your criteria. So one, four, and six would, would get you the list that we need. Uh, I'm just sort of scrolling through these. You can sort of see um, all the different types of tables that we've got. Um, and that's very, very handy uh, when you want to see what tables or if you want to query tables for a certain one, you know, certain tables that are in your your uh, collection for your application and um, I suppose we could order by name here and uh, and that would make it even easier so there we go so there's our our candy makers um, and uh, all kinds of candy tables and we've got some with underscores on them and this today's video you know if you have an access database that's linked with like a hundred link tables and you and you and you need to, you know, you've accidentally linked all of them again and, and you have a hundred more tables with underscore one on them, um, this video is for you. Um, so stay tuned here because we're going to look at how to cycle through these. Um, so now you've looked at that, so you know how to query, you can look at that table, you can see what tables are in there in the MySys objects. And now I've gone and I've gone create and module and I'm just going to create a new module and I'll just call it cycle table defs. And, um, and we're just going to do a very simple procedure here that's going to help us to, uh, to cycle through and then make changes um, depending on conditions. And so this is very handy when you've got like, you know, hundreds of tables and you don't want to do the same manual thing over and over and over again. Uh, this is really going to make your life easier. So I've just created a subroutine. That's what the sub... Uh, is there and then I've called it cycle table defs um, and I have no arguments so it's just empty brackets uh, with the cycle table defs name. Um, I've added a comment and now I'm going to add a couple of variables. I'm just going to say 
uh, dim long tables is long, and then we're going to uh, dim long table is long. And uh, I'll, I'll grab a name variable and I'll grab, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll use a table definition variable uh, that's going to um, look at each of our tables and, uh, and then we can sort of cycle through here. So I'll set our database equal to current DB and then I'll set it equal to nothing. Um, for, for those of you that like to uh, release those, those uh, resources each time, and uh, and then I'll use uh, I'm going to set long tables. I'll say long tables is equal to db .table defs count. So that's going to give us the total number of table defs in in the uh, table defs collection, uh, which is uh, very very handy uh, collection for us to use in DAO. Is what, what what we're using here, and and then we can go uh, you know for long table for each table equals zero to uh, long tables dot count or pardon me long tables minus one um, then uh, we can do a four next on that and so that'll be uh, so it's zero based and so you have to use long tables minus one um, in order to get the last item in in the count and so this is going to allow us to cycle through the entire collection and do whatever we want so we'll set the table def uh, tdf equal to the the table definition for that um, uh, item, index item, and uh, then we can do things like we can get the name from it. So we'll do that now. Uh, so I'll say str name is equal to tdf dot name, and um, that's gonna our first thing that we can do is that we can grab the name and we can do things with it. Now, so I'll, in this case, I'll just debug dot print. I'll hit play on the on the toolbar there and you'll see that this spits it all out in alphabetical order actually. Um, and so um, this allows us to go through and you'll see that it has those MSYS tables in there. Um, just like we filtered out when we looked it up uh, with a query, uh, we're going to filter that out here in a second as well. Uh, but you can see the nice thing is, is we have our candy link table and our candy uh, Azure SQL table uh, table def, uh, which is actually a link table. Uh, we've got those in our tables collection there, our table defs collection, and that's very, very handy because you can have five different kinds of link tables and you can uh, scroll through the whole, a lot of them and make changes to certain ones if you want to. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to filter out those system tables because we don't really want to do anything with those. Um, so the first thing that I'll do here is I will, um, <clears throat> I'll do, you know, if, if left, I know the name, of, left four characters of the name is not equal to my sys, then we'll do some stuff. Um, otherwise, we're not going to do anything with those tables. We don't want to touch those system tables. Um, and, uh, and that's going to allow us to, to do kind of, you know, whatever we want. And... Um, and so now we've got a nice procedure that goes through the entire um, entire collection, filters out the system tables, and oops, I guess I put my cursor in there. There we go. So now I'll hit play, and now we've got just the tables that we want to see, and these are sort of like the tables of our application. Uh, these can be all your link tables. Um, these can be um, all kinds of stuff, and uh, it makes it very very nice to work with them. So uh, moving on, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll close that and you can see that's our last one. Our last table there is work hours and that's the table that we saw at the end of our list there. Um, just to show you that the, uh, the table list is complete. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more logic in here and I'm going to do some if then logic because then you can, once you are evaluating each of the table definitions in sequence, you can do things with those table definitions, uh, whatever you want. So in this case, what I might do is I might say change the name of the table def uh, in only this one case. Uh, so if the right part of the name is underscore one, then we'll you know add something to the name, and we'll say tdf.name is equal to 
the name and uh, you know underscore one on the end written out something arbitrary like that and that'll allow you to go through the entire set and then it'll pick out all those ones and so you don't have to go and find them in your hundreds of tables um, and that's one way that you can do it and we are going to take a look at um, stay tuned because there's a got big gotcha if you start deleting table definitions or removing them um, I've got a way around that that you'll see here in just a minute so make sure you stay tuned here um, so what we're gonna do is if we're gonna you know rename it then we can say tdf.name is equal to the new name and then we'll just debug print that to give some feedback to ourselves because we're the ones administering this and then we'll say we changed this table um, and then if I hit play on there you can see it just bam it goes through the whole list and it says oh I changed the name of that one and I changed the name of that one let's go see what it looks like and so if I scroll up here um, I think there was one that had an underscore one up here yeah there we go so our candy makers uh, underscore one is now underscore one and then written out one I think there was another one down here there we go uh, uh, transaction table one uh, also has one on the end of it and uh, so that's one way that you can change uh, you can also work with other other uh, methods and things uh, of the table definition objects so make sure you explore those um, and uh, that's sort of how you can do the name change um, and if we wanted to uh, change other things like I said we can we can you know scroll through you can change different um, you can refresh the link you can you can do all kinds of things with the table definition you can uh, create a new field uh, create properties and and things like that and and uh, and so there's there's different things that you can do if you as you sort of cycle through your table definitions collection now what if we wanted to delete some tables and this is this is very common I used to have this all the time when I had you know my link hundreds of link tables and I would accidentally relink all of them and have underscore ones or underscore twos or I had to rename a whole bunch of tables due to some diff you know programming changes or whatever uh, within my hundreds of tables and so it would be it became quite a, a task to to handle all those things and so what we want to do now uh, when we when we do deletions, if we have anything that has delete in it, we have to make sure that we go through the table definitions backwards. And the reason for that is that each time we um, delete a table, then the index of the table tables collection changes. Um, and so the next one in your in your list, so we've got our our table that we're getting the number of the table each time that we go through our loop that number long table there in the table defs um, it's actually going to change um, uh, as you go through and so it's going to error out at the end because there's actually less items that are there and if you stored any variables with names and things it's going to be all screwed up uh, because you removed one of those items but if you go backwards through a collection this is this also applies to collections, which is in another video that I sh that I did for you guys recently. If you go backwards through collections, you go backwards backwards through the table desk collection, and you're working on the index, um, it will stay correct if you go go through it backwards. Uh, because if you delete one and you go back to the previous one, it doesn't matter that you deleted the the previous one. But if you're going forward through it. Um, it's going to make a big difference because the next item in the list is not going to be the one that the program expects it to be. So in this case, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to grab the right, uh, the right two characters here of my um, uh, table definitions. I'm just going to cycle through again here to print out all the names. And uh, I'm going to grab that right, um, the right two characters. You can see some of the item some of the tables in there had underscore one, underscore two, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm going to do um, a select case of my uh, string there for, for, um, for the right two characters. And I'm going to say um, case underscore one, case underscore two, case underscore three. 
and I could do something different for each of those. This is just a short way of saying if it's each, if it is one of these, um, then we're going to do um, we're going to do something with those um, tables. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do uh, do command dot um, <clears throat> delete object since we have the name here. Uh, we'll do uh, AC table and uh, we'll do uh, the, the name uh, as the argument there and that's going to delete that table def um, and, uh, and we'll do debug.print deleted. And I should note that you can also use uh, db.tabledefs. Uh, or tabledefs delete uh, with the name in brackets. Um, so that's another way that you can delete. Uh, from the collection um, and just before I run this I'm going to go to the top and bottom of my procedure here I'm going to turn off the warning so it doesn't ask me are you sure you want to delete this table on, on each table as it goes through the entire um, set so what we're going to do is we're going to use delete object uh, it's a table object type is table and we're and the name is the name in, that we've collected there if it has the right two characters of any of those there and it's going to skip those MSYS tables so that we don't do anything with those ones. Um, and uh, so this kind of gives you a blueprint of being able to cycle through. Now let's see what we got here. So there we go. So it's deleted um, transaction underscore two underscore three for candy makers and underscore two for candy makers. Um, and uh, the underscore one tables were, we changed the names on those. So they did not get deleted. You can see the first one there. So that one has that, that one on the end that we put there before when we cycled through. And the other one, candymakers underscore one, also has the word one after it. Um, so that one didn't get deleted. But you can see the other ones are deleted. So uh, transaction table two, candymakers three, candymakers two, those have all been deleted. And that's exactly what we wanted to see there. And that is how you can query your table names and cycle through your table definitions in Microsoft Access.